It was nine o'clock in the evening when Bill finally made up his mind and made his way upstairs to the bedroom. Anna, his pretty wife of twenty-six years, was going out with her friends. He hadn't liked it when she had gone out with these women last Friday, and he couldn't wouldn't accept it as part of the new weekly routine. Anna saw the look on her husband's face inside. You're not going to bitch about it, are you? He nodded at the tiny dress spread out on the bed and the sexy blue lingerie she was wearing. She looked stunning in them. I've never seen that before. Bill said. She looked a little uncomfortable. Well, of course, you haven't. I only bought them this week. He walked to the bathroom with a thoughtful expression on his face and quickly returned with her laundry thrown in the wash, so this is normal for your husband. He pointed to the very plain cotton bra and panties in his hand. But are you glad you bought these? He nodded at the tiny blue bra and matching lace panties. For some random man you haven't met yet, Bill gave his wife a hard look. Not yet. He paused meaningfully. Unless it's just another party with the girls from work, maybe you've arranged to meet someone there, kind of like a date. He bowed his head thoughtfully as Anna stared at him incredulously. No. She exclaimed. There is no one else. How could you even think of that? So Bill said ignoring her question and choosing his words carefully. When you go out with these friends, you never dance with other men, hug them, kiss them, or let them touch you. How dare you even suggest such a thing? Now she seemed to be getting angry, I dare suggest it because I know more about your friends than you probably realize. He replied, an unmarried woman, a couple of divorcees, and the company of you. Do you really expect me to believe that when they're looking for casual sex for one evening or night, they won't try to bring you down to their level? How dare you judge them? Anna snapped at me. I'm not judging them at all. He replied in a level tone. They are free to make their own choices just as you are. She looked at him with unconscious suspicion, and yet you tell me not to go. What choice is that? I didn't tell you not to go. I made it clear that I think such behavior is inappropriate for a married woman and that your friends are dragging you into a situation that will inevitably end badly for our marriage. Are you really suggesting that my seeing my friends could jeopardize our marriage? She snorted derisively. Don't be so bloody and secure. I'll always come home to you. Why are you so concerned? I'm concerned because you're the most beautiful woman I know and you're going clubbing with single women I don't trust. Add to that horny men and alcohol, and it leads to trouble. And he continued, raising his hand to forestall her possible retort. Our marriage is already in danger because you think that this he outlined her almost complete nakedness with a wave of his hand. Is something your husband should just accept. Well, it's too late now. I promised to meet them at 10, and you're going to make me late by continuing this conversation like this. Anna turned away from him and went back to her makeup. Bill decided to make one last attempt. You also promised to honor your husband. He remarked wryly. And now you seem to be quietly ignoring that promise. Or are your girlfriend's feelings more important to you than mine? What the hell has gotten into you? She cut me off roughly. I'm going out for a drink with my friends. That's all. Now for God's sake, get off my back and get some rest. Bill took a deep breath. The thing is I wanna trust you, but I refuse to sit at home every Friday night wondering if you're going to take the extra step tonight and end up sleeping with some random guy by the bar wall I wouldn't do that you he stopped her again. Gail has been bragging about just such exploits on social media this past week, she's one of your friends, and that's exactly what she's been doing. How long before you start believing it's okay if I never find out? Anna just stared at him speechless, Bill continued already starting to get angry. If you want to go dancing, invite me along. If you just want to rub your tits on strangers, then be honest, and we can end this right now. Now you're just insulting me and I replied indigently. No. I'm honest. I don't believe you don't dirty dance or make out with con men looking for casual affection or worse a quick fuck. I'm willing to believe that you haven't slept with anyone yet. But that's the choice I've offered you. 
go or stay. It's up to you. But keep in mind that I have a choice too. If you go, I won't be waiting here to complain and whine when you come back. There, he said it. He'd given her every chance to understand his concerns to hear his desire to make their marriage a success, but she'd ignored him. Now she had a choice him or her friends. That's a damn bad joke, Bill. She was as angry as he'd never seen her in the four years they'd been a couple. No, it's not a joke. He said quietly, if you want to dress like your slutty friends and go out drinking and dancing with them every Friday night and that's okay with you, I'm just saying that the prospect of me sitting around waiting for you to come home one day with an unknown man's semen dripping down your leg is not what I see in my life, he said as he walked towards the door. I've got things to do. I'll be downstairs when you decide, she sat silently in front of the mirror brooding. She hadn't had sex with others well, not really, but there had indeed been temptation last week, and she'd given the guy relief with a hand job, but that was it. And she loved the way men looked at her on the dance floor. It made her feel more desirable. Bill was always complimenting her on the way she looked, but she felt he had to do that because he was her husband. The guys at the club, they wanted to eat her up. Bill was sitting at his laptop filling out an online form. At a quarter to ten, Anna came downstairs, he looked at her. Had she stayed or had she gone? She was in high heels showing off long slender legs disappearing into a short, tight, blue dress, he hadn't said anything. Was she going to take him up on his offer to let her husband take her to the dance, or was she going out with her slutty girlfriends? She still looked a little indecisive. And after an agonizing pause for both of them, she spoke. I can't be late. We can talk about it tomorrow." Bill shook his head slowly and went back to his computer ignoring his wife. She took a step toward the exit. Unsure if her husband was bluffing, he didn't even hear the front door close as she left. He finished filling out the form and sent it off attaching the link to the email and hitting send. Bill went upstairs and threw his clothes into a couple suitcases. On Monday, he would tell his boss that he would accept the job he had been offered in Dubai. He hailed a cab, and while he waited, he sent a message to his wife's family. Clear to me that she requires more excitement and thrill out of life than I can give. I sent her a link to our divorce filing. It has been a privilege to be a part of your family but I hope you will understand why I have decided not to keep in touch with all of you from now on. He had one more thing to do. So he walked over to the printer, took a piece of paper from the output tray, and wrote at the bottom. He pasted it on top of their wedding picture above the fireplace. Then he turned off his phone and went outside to wait for a cab. Anna had just sat down at the club and was chatting with Gail when her phone rang. If this is Bill begging me to come home. She muttered irritably, but it was her older sister Karen. Where the hell are you? Karen screamed. Uh, I'm at Stardust with my friends, she said, defending herself from the unexpected onslaught. What's the matter? Does Bill know? Karen asked. Uh, yeah, well, he knows I've been seeing my friends. So what's the big deal? Was he happy about it? Karen seemed very angry, but then again, she'd always had a soft spot for Bill. Well, no. He's not thrilled, of course, but I told him we'd talk tomorrow. Well, then, damn, good luck with that, you stupid fool. He dumped you. If you don't believe me, check your email. Karen disconnected. Gail watched in amazement as Anna frantically tried to open the email app on her phone. Even in the dim light of the nightclub, she could see that her friend had gone noticeably pale. Anna then noticed a message for her family. That must have been the reason for Karen's call. Then her phone rang again. Thank God, Bill. But, no, it was her father. What did you say to Bill? Demanded her dad. The man treated you like a queen and you wanted more. No, dad, I just felt trapped, so I just needed one night a week to be me. You're in a goddamn nightclub. Your husband just left you and you're out at fucking clubs. He said incredulously, 
Dad was clearly furious. He never swore in front of his family. What could she possibly say to that? She was in the club. It was obvious from the background noise. No dad, he must have decided after I left home. Dad? Dad? He hung up the phone, Anna grabbed her bag and phone and quickly left, completely ignoring Gail and not noticing her other two friends as she passed them on the street. She found a cab and was home in 15 minutes. She tried to call her husband on the way out, but his phone had switched to voicemail. The house was quiet and abandoned. Anna kicked off her shoes and ran upstairs. Most of his clothes, his shaving kit were gone. She came back downstairs, his phone, his laptop, his wallet, all gone. And I rushed upstairs again, his passport was gone too. He had warned her. There was no ambiguity. There was no room for misinterpretation, if she left, she would return to an empty house. She knew he'd never lied, and she knew he'd been betrayed by a girl in the past, and Bill put honesty above all else. He did exactly as he said he would. Anna went downstairs again at a complete loss. An hour ago, she had been married. Now she was separated, in less than a year, she would be divorced to go out to the dance. Then she saw the picture above the fireplace. It didn't look right. When Anna examined the image, she almost threw up. It was a picture from someone's social media account. It showed a young man on his knees proposing to his girlfriend, but there in the background was Anna and making out with some guy brazenly groping her breasts. Above the photo, Bill had written in big black letters, lying. What happened next? Bill went abroad, and Anna was given the freedom she dreamed of. Everything that came after that, Anna's abortion six months later, Bill eventually marrying that sweet and charming Australian woman he met surfing in Dubai are separate stories that may or may not be told. But their story, the story of Bill and Anna ended there.